Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today we're going to be traveling all the way back to 1991 to listen to Driving the Last Spike by the amazing Genesis. This one comes from the album We Can't Dance, of course. It's about the railway workers of the 19th century. Though it wasn't a single, it charted at number 25 in the U.S. and number 51 in Canada. And it's a 10-plus minute 90s Genesis song. Yes, please. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button as well as the notification bell to join the Retro Reactions community where it's all amazing music all the time. Here we go. I can't. 
Wow, amazing. Pretty progressive rock for obvious reasons and just so much musical goodness to take in and enjoy. Uh, we start off with a deep, shimmering, moody, gentle intro. Wow, caught my ears and held them right from the first minute. Uh, excellent guitar work from the get-go all the way to the very end. So much variety in that guitar. It was everywhere. It was so enjoyable. So I bow down to you, Mike, of course. Incredible, including that bass. And then you add in those smooth, lush, gentle keyboard tones by Tony, you know, setting the mood, adding so much to the songs like he always does. Of course, we're going to get that in an epic tale like this. Wow. Always blown away by Tony's work, naturally. Um, a really great chorus. I love the harmonies. I assume that was the chorus when they started singing about, can you feel me? Can you hear me? Something like that. Uh, just incredible melody. Again, those harmonies, perfection. Then we got a switch up, the first switch up. It felt like a throwback to 80s Genesis. I really enjoyed that, especially with those keyboard tones and melodies. So that was incredible. Just a big shift in energy by this point. Of course, all the while going upwards and upwards in that energy as we progress through the song. This one was overflowing with some great drum fills by Phil, of course, and also lots of great subtle percussion going on, peppered in throughout the song. Again, adding so much. They know how to craft a song perfectly. Around the halfway point, this really thick electric guitar solo by Mike, combined with more powerful drum fills. They know how to deliver emotion always, and they know how to deliver power, musical power, when they need to and when they want to. Then another switch up, and probably one of my favorite parts of the song, we get this new groovy musical idea, a lot of funky uh, guitar strumming going on. The music was so triumphant at this point, so full of bliss. It was like watching a perfect sunset, you know, living without a care in the world. I was just in the moment, smiling inside and out. This song gives a really nice mix of emotions, you know, very steady. We go here, we go there, we go here. A lot of similarity, but variances. Uh, no big jumps in emotions, and that made for a great pleasurable experience. Um, the song also builds so well. It has time to at over 10 minutes. Uh, that 10 minutes flew by, but I'm glad it lasted that long because they were able to give us so much and build our emotions so much. And by the end section, pure exuberance in the music. Uh, Phil was singing with so much passion. I loved it. I really zoned in on his voice, the way he was delivering. I think this one is another one of his greatest vocal song performances, in my opinion. Uh, just feel good music in the best way possible for me. And I'm so glad that they ended the song with a Can You Feel Me section. Just a strong and such a beautiful part of the song. That's how they send me off. Wow, amazing song. It's as good as some of you told me it would be. Interesting juxtaposition that we have these very sad lyrics with this beautiful triumphant music. But it makes sense because I think in the end the narrator is holding on to hope something better coming his way. So it makes sense that we have this hopeful, maybe triumphant music, suggesting that maybe he does triumph and does return home. So I think it's a first-person account of the fears and toils of this railway worker who leaves his family and heads for work into the unknown. Conditions were brutal, but he was strong and determined. An accident happens, killing many, but the narrator survives. He's proud of his hard work amidst the horrid conditions and simply wants to be appreciated so desperately. He holds the dream that he will one day be reunited with his beloved family. And deep down inside, I think it does happen. Really love this one. So far, a perfect album with the first three. It's getting the Epic Platinum Record Award. Yes, completely deserving for Driving the Last Spike by Genesis, 1991. Thank you so much, Phil Collins, Tony Banks, and Mike Rutherford. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. If you wish to chat about this song, I would love to know what you think about it, what your favorite things about it are. So you take care, stay safe, stay hydrated, and remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night. And I'll see you next time in the past. Oh, 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 oh.